everyone and welcome back to Cram Farms. Today we're going to be putting in some fruit trees in our orchard. Now this orchard area is the place that we just had. Um, we actually started cutting trees here last summer and then in the past several weeks we've had excavating work done. We got the um, stumps picked up and cleared out of here and we have most recently just started um, staking out where some of like the key things in this area are going to be so we have started putting stakes out for where the fire pit is going to be the area around that and then we have started going through and started staking out places for where our fruit trees are going to go and uh today so there's one there's one there's one there's one you got to pay really close attention to spacing when you're putting fruit trees in because some trees need a lot of space like 12 to 15 feet, 18 to 20 feet, depending on the tree and depending on the size. So there are lots of different sizes when it comes to fruit trees. They have standard and they have semi-dwarf and they have dwarf. And so you really have to pay attention to what you're ordering, um, what size tree you're gonna get and the spacing needed for that tree. Now, the size of tree that you get also is gonna play into how much fruit you get from that tree and um, <clears throat> how long it actually takes you to get fruit. So a more standard sized tree, which is gonna be much larger, um, like in a plum tree, for instance, 18 to 20 feet needed for spacing, but you're gonna also end up getting more fruit from that tree than you would a dwarf sized tree. So you wanna look at those things when you start trying to decide um, what size tree you're gonna be putting in. Now out here, we are going with um, peach trees, apple trees, and plum. And then you will see um, later on, not right now, we're gonna be putting in blueberry bushes and then we're gonna bring, be bringing some flowers and things in too. So let's get started out here today. I'll talk to you a little bit about how we decided what we were putting in. And then we are gonna do something called a fruit tree guild around our fruit trees. Um, and that has to do all with permaculture. I'll explain that to you and tell you why we're doing that. Next. It ten feet. Yep. That's twelve. So that's twenty. How about that one? That's more than ten. I think it's going to be for the chair. That's right. That's thirteen. Thirteen and a half. So we can actually move it here if you want. And towards the road a little bit. So here. We need to measure that. Part. So I need to pull this up and not confuse this, right? Right. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm daggone. All right, that's 20. So we need to go, we need to have 10 that way. 10 that way. All right. And that's, that's it yeah. for that one, right? Well, that'll be one plum and that'll be the second plum. So for a plum tree and spacing for the ones that we have, we need about 18 to 20 feet. So we're gonna go on the larger side, give them as much space as possible. We're going on 20. So we have measured out here, 10 feet from the edges, put it in the middle. And then we will measure, we measured already, 20 feet from that plum to that plum. So from trunk to trunk. And now we're gonna measure out the spacing for an apple tree. So we have two trees we are moving from the backyard, two apple trees that are already well established. So we're going to put one here, one here, and then another one that way. That way they're not shading any of the newer trees because they have already been growing for a couple of years. So one of the first things I recommend you doing when you get to your homestead or when you start figuring out where you're going to be putting plants is to put your fruit trees in. It takes them the longest to get established and to start producing you fruit. So get them in first so that by the time you have um, your systems in place and buildings and things going, then you've got food being produced. So we did put in two in the back when we first got here. And so those are the ones that we're actually going to get apples from this year. And we are putting in more this year. We should have put in more when we first got here, but we didn't kind of know where things, our land wasn't nearly as clear. We've cleared a ton of land um, since we moved here. 
So now that that land is clear, we're going on and putting these fruit trees in as quickly as we can so that we can have fruit growing and then we'll be able to eat that and provide more food for our family in the coming years. So I don't know if you can see those stakes here, but this is the fire pit area right out here. So one of the important things when you are figuring out what you're gonna be planting where is you need to really pay close attention. Oh, there's a motorcycle going by. You need to pay close attention to the sun and what parts of your yard get sun at what times of the day and how much sun, because a lot of these fruit trees, you know, they need a good like eight hours of sun a day. So you don't want to put them somewhere that's gonna be really shady. So when we're figuring out now where to put these trees, I know I already have two apple trees that are well established in the backyard that we're gonna be moving here. So they're bigger than these trees we're getting ready to put in. So I wanna plant them to where they're not shading out the others. <clears throat> so my new fruit tree is gonna go behind me because the sun, our sun, this is the east for us. These trees will get the most sunlight so that these over here don't shade them out as the day goes on. So this is where I'm going to plant my wine sap apple. And the wine sap, I can't move it until fall. So that is why I'm labeling here. Whoa, I cannot write very well on my side and upside down. That's why I'm labeling this now. So this stake can stay here and I will know in fall which tree is going where because we have already measured out and spaced everything out to know um, spacing wise where the trees are gonna go. All right, and our Macintosh apple will go right here. So another thing to think about when you are doing trees, this is a bare root. You can see the roots. This is a bare root um, tree. So it comes like this. You can see little buds on it. Now, peach trees, your apple trees, your plum trees, you will see self pollinating on your trees, a lot of them. Don't be confused by that. When it says self pollinating, that means that you can have fruit from just one tree. But what they don't tell you sometimes is that if you want more fruit, you need at least two because they will, they will cross pollinate to give you more fruit than just the one tree. So if you had a plum tree and you just had one, you know, five apples versus having two plum trees, you would get 50. Now those aren't exact numbers, but that's kind of what I mean by getting a little bit of fruit from one or having two trees to cross pollinate and to help each other out and you will get more fruit. So we are gonna put in two plums, two peaches, and we have three apple trees total. Now you wanna make sure you have a really nice size hole. Okay, that's a root. Now, because we just had this area stumped, you can see we are hitting a root down here. But you want a hole that is nice and comfortable for your tree to go into. You want the roots to be able to expand. Um, and you also wanna keep these trees um, wet. You want them to get well established in their new home here. Um, the tree is already going to be in shock from being transplanted and put in. So you want to give it a nice yeah, hole. They need water, sun, and soil. That's right. So, <clears throat> so we're going to use um, some good dirt that we have that we have been composting to put in here. Put the tree in, get it all tucked in good, and get it watered really well. So we put in lots of good dirt around here and now we're going to make sure to give it lots of good water and we will um, be using some wood chips around here and we're also going to plant a few more things to help this plant. You got a stag beetle? Uh-huh. See? It's big in a hole. Look at him. See if you can get close up. All right, this is going to be our Crest Haven peach tree, right, Max? Uh huh. Here it is. Let's see it. There it is. It'll take a few years. Mm, look how tall it is compared. Look at that. So look at how tall it is now, and then wait and see. In a few years, it's going to be tall, way taller than you. It's a little taller than you. 
Yeah. It's like this much. Mom, <laughs> look at the sad needle. I pushed it out. Let's see. Mom. Yeah. When are you going to play yoga murder today? Is this Hopefully. 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 I'm going to keep an eye and see how much taller it is when it's full blown. Do y'all need to pull up roots? It's mm -hmm. way taller. <coughs> Probably like 18 more inches. You want to plant more uh, than that? Tomato around here? Seven. Hey, Max, go grab that cranberry plant for me. So what we're gonna do around these fruit trees is called a fruit, fruit tree guild. And what that is, is a permaculture way of um, planting your fruit trees. So everything will work together for the benefit of the tree and the plants around it. So when you're doing a fruit tree guild, you'll have your fruit tree, that is the center. And then around it, you're gonna put things like insectary plants. So that would be, um, Things that are gonna bring in good beneficial insects, your pollinators. Um, you want bees around in here, so anything's gonna have blooms. You're gonna want, we're gonna be putting in some yarrow as um, insectuary. We're also gonna be bringing in um, echinacea, which is beautiful. You can get it in tons of different colors. Um, it is medicinal and it brings in pollinators for around your tree. Um, comfrey, which is great for a um, putting nitrogen back into the soil it's a nitrogen fixer and apple trees need or fruit trees in general need lots of nitrogen so that'll be right here at the base of the tree we're also going to have um you want some type of ground cover to kind of help with your weeds strawberry plants are great for that but we're actually going to be using cranberry um here is one cranberry but we're going to have cranberries are very prolific so even for our family of six we're only going to be putting in four cranberry plants. Um, you can get about one to two uh, quarts of cranberries off of a cranberry plant in a year. And so for our family, that's still a lot of cranberries. But we can have lots of cranberry sauce. Um, so we're going to use cranberries around the base. They will kind of spread and will be great ground cover. Um, you could also use strawberries. Um, cow peas would be good for nitrogen and kind of some ground cover too. There's different things you can use for that. We're also going to be looking at putting in some flower bulbs. So bulbs have a dense root system because of that bulb. So in the fall, we'll plant flower bulbs around all the fruit trees and that will help with weeds as well because they have that bulb in the ground that will help block weeds from growing around the tree. But it will also bring in more um, beneficial insects for pollinating. You want to make sure you have those few things. You want insectaries, you want something for nitrogen, you want something for fertilizer. Now we can cut the comfrey once it gets um, big and cut the leaves and just drop them around the tree and that will, nitrogen will go in the soil. It'll also be like good fertilizer for the soil um, around the fruit tree. And you also want mulch. So we are going to be putting, as soon as I get these cranberries in, we are going to be putting um, a mulch layer around the entire tree and the area that we are planting here and that is going to be uh, wood chips that we have that have been saved from um, over time so you can use straw is great uh, we've done straw in the past also so you just want to put that down to give your fruit tree a good healthy start and one of the most important things is remember to keep it well watered while these trees are getting established and the root base is getting established in the soil really well you've got to keep it watered so um, right now in spring is a great time to plant your fruit trees or wait again until fall um, you really don't want to put them in the heat of summer because the tree is already going into shock when you're planting it and so then if you um, stick it in the heat of summer and you get hot and drought conditions it's just not gonna be perfect for your tree so plant your fruit trees spring and fall we're gonna put some good dirt down in there yeah we're gonna put some good dirt in there and then we're gonna put the peach tree in I don't, I don't think you're gonna fall in another thing fruit trees like as well drain soil so you'll see how we have these on the downward slope of our land um, so when it rains and the water flows it's gonna flow downhill and so the trees will get it but it will also keep draining off it's not somewhere that's gonna puddle and um, like puddle water around you don't want water puddling around the base of your trees so they're in areas that have good drainage good sunlight and then you would just want to pay attention and keep a check on them um, one thing you want to be sure to keep a check on 
<clears throat> is their trunks. So you don't want their trunks getting damaged while they're this young. So you will um, will wrap these. They have tree pro um, trunk protectors. You can also just take like a um, piece of drain, um, like the black drain line and put it on there. And then it will help protect it from deer or any wildlife or um, our cat even. She, I've seen her scratch the trees in the backyard before too. All right, so now we're digging the hole for the cranberry, which is gonna serve as good ground cover, but it also is gonna serve as giving us another fruit to have. So I came away from the trunk of the tree. Reason being is that when this tree grows, you don't want it shading out your cranberries completely. So you gotta think about that when you are planting, even though it might look really far away now, as you put things around your tree, you know, I'm going to come back and put in my comfrey, yarrow. We're going to have bulbs in here. You might think you have a ton of space, an empty space. But as you come in and things start to grow and they fill in, it fills in the space so it won't look so empty. So here is our American cranberry. And it's going to go right in this hole, a little bit away from our plum tree. Now we're going to get some wood chips. And we're going to heavily mulch these areas. You can see where I already put in one cranberry right here with um, this other, this is a peach tree, peach, and then put the cranberry here. And we are going to mulch around all of these. And when you're mulching, you don't want to bring mulch right up to the base of your trunk of the tree. You want to leave some space around the tree um, without mulch. So we will bring the mulch up close, but not all the way to it. The reason being is you do not want, for one thing, you don't want insects laying eggs right at the base of your tree um, but you also don't want to hold a ton of moisture there either so you're just gonna leave a little bit of space around the trunk of your tree because you want to keep them as disease free as you can Keep it going. Hey, leave us a comment below. Let me know, do you have any fruit trees planted? And if so, what kind? We put in plum, peach, and another apple today. We have one more plum on the way, and we have two apple in the back that we're moving out here. So we will have those three types of fruit trees on our homestead. So leave a comment below and let us know what you have at your house. Thanks so much for joining us on the homestead today. I hope you got a few tips on getting those fruit trees in the ground as soon as you find a place that you're gonna make your homestead, or if you already have a spot and you're looking at some doing some gardening, get fruit trees in the ground as soon as you possibly can, because then they will start um, producing you fruit in several years. So don't forget, please give our video a like, that thumbs up button, and please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we will see you next time right here at Cram Farms. Are you getting ready?